Dr. Vina was born, there he is, was born in Mexico. He graduated as medical doctor from the University of Guadalajara, did a clinical research fellowship at the University of Alberta, and I'm skipping a lot of steps here, and subsequently completed a master's degree in experimental medicine. Not to be outdone, he's pursued a doctoral degree at the University of British Columbia, UBC. Dr. Avinia is currently assistant professor at the Division of Rheumatology, Department of Medicine at the University of British Columbia. My brief introduction surely does not do justice to Dr. Avinia's accomplishments, but you can read far more of his complete bio on the ARC website. So please welcome Dr. Avinia. Hello, everyone. I'm just saying, welcome everyone. Well, I'm just taking advantage of the time because it's very straight here, so start counting. Thank you everyone uh, for being here. Um, I am also the VC Lupus Scholar, and I'm thankful for that. Um, what I want to present today is how arthritis cause, causes heart disease, strokes, and blood clots. Some is very recent data, it's preliminary data, and uh, you're going to be one of the few people to start seeing this today. Um, so the overview is I'm going to tell you in simple language why arthritis increases the risk of these complications, how big the risk are, and how to interpret the risk estimates for these diseases, for these complications. In a very simple way, cardiovascular disease is a result of a direct complication of inflammation. Many years ago, it was considered that cardiovascular disease was just a cholesterol problem. Current science now says that, that inflammation is the main driver of heart disease, but not only of heart disease, very much in a lot of the complications that we, suffer, that we see currently in the world are leading th or by inflammation. So this is an example, a graphic on what happens in the norm, from a normal artery in the heart until it becomes clogged with cholesterol. On the left-hand side, I don't know if I have a pointer here. Um, I, there's, no, there's no mouse here. Yeah, this is the normal artery with its clean wall, and this is how the, sorry, how the cholesterol start accumulated in, internally in the wall and that it progresses gradually. In these first two phases, there's no symptoms. And then the next one, which is very sensitive to moving, and I'm not gonna touch you, the third one on your right, is how it become the symptoms, where the cholesterol starts to accumulate. And finally, when a clot happens, because the, the cholesterol breaks in to the blood uh, flow circulation, then the acute heart happens. This is a continuous process, and the first two phases are asymptomatic, and this is when actually we can intervene to do it. The difference between people who have arthritis and people who do not have, this happens even in people who do not have arthritis. The difference is arthritis people, the process happens faster because the inflammation drives the process in a higher speed. And this is another example. On your left-hand side, you can see, this is, I'm not gonna touch it. So on the right-hand side here of each panel, you will see a normal artery. Very nice cells lining all together, beautiful like a skin baby. And on this left side of the panel, you will see a lot of cells who had invaded the wall of the vessel, and you will see a nasty things happening there. The same process happens in the joint, as you can see. Here, you will see a normal joint, and on the right side, you will see same type of cells. And this is how the link happens between the increasing risk of heart attacks and, and arthritis. Because the mediators of the joint inflammation are also mediating the risk of heart attacks. And this is some of the results that we have recently done this is ARC research and some research done by ARC scientists in other places. This is the risk of heart attacks in different people. All numbers who are above one means that there's an increased risk. 
we consider the, norm, the number one, the baseline risk for people in the general population. You can see that the risks are different across diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis has the lowest, psoriatic arthritis has the lowest in this panel. SSC means scleroderma or systemic sclerosis. This is in this one, the highest one is up to four times more than the general population. This is inflammatory myopathies. DM means dermatomyositis, PM polymyositis, Sjogren disease, and vasculitis. One more again, the risk changes across diseases. It went until we see the results published. So another risk factor uh, that I'm, we're going to talk about is uh, another complication is clotting in the legs, which is called deep, deep venous thrombosis. There the problem is in the veins. You can see a normal circulation in a normal vein, and then a clot forming in the, in, in the vein. And when this clot gets loose, it travels to the lung, and this is also a severe complication. The problem here, the three main risk factors for that is lack of physical activity, increased clotting, which happens with inflammation. Inflammation decreases the natural anticoagulants that the, blood, the system naturally has. And this is the communication between the inflammation system and the coagulation system. And of course, damage to the vessel wall, which is promoted by inflammation. Again, here are the risk, the different risks across diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis seems to be the one with the less disease. However, this is a more frequent disease than the others, and this is important to keep in mind. Lupus in the second line, third for dermatopolymyositis. The highest one was for Takayasu disease. Takayasu disease is one of the most rare diseases and one of the systemic vasculitis. Again, this is a risk of clots for in the lung, those who actually travel to the lung, which is not everybody who has clots in the legs uh, develops pulmonary embolism, but of course you need to have a clot in the leg first, then you develop clot in the lung. And it's a bad outcome because this has uh, at least 50% mortality within six months if not treated properly. And again, the risk is different and it seems to be like is related to the intensity of the inflammation, at least is what the preliminary data shows to us. And I'm not gonna show you other data uh, because it's gonna be uh, published later, but it seems like it's the in intensity of the inflammation that drives the risk. Again, stroke is a third complication and two types of strokes the ones that are associated with clotting and the ones who are associated with leaking of the blood when the vessel breaks, and that's more associated with high blood pressure. But the one associated with these complications in the heart and the legs is similar to what happened in, in the brain. Clot, and then there's no blood circulation, and then an infarction happens. Similar to what happens in the heart, happens in the brain. Again, in this slide you can see the different risk and the risk varies across diseases. And these are all inflammatory arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis on the left, and systemic sclerosis on the right. And you can see that the risk varies depending on the type of the disease. Of course, the intensity of the inflammation is an important one, but there are all the risk factors independent of uh, inflammation that are associated with increased risk. For instance, lupus patients and, uh, have an increased risk of stroke because they have a specific antibody that they're not present in other diseases. So it's the intensity of the inflammation plus individual characteristics of the disease. So now how are you going to interpret the results? And I'm going to give you a very simple example, and we hope that this can be actually published in our work so website so you can calculate the difference later on for any disease you want. So basically what you have to look every time you see results is look for the rate difference. How many events happen in the disease of interest versus how many events happen, or what's the rate? And I'm giving you an example here. Let's imagine that in a study, a lupus report, a lupus study report that there was 3% events of heart attacks. That means three events in one in 100 patients. And the normal population, that happens one event. So the risk is three times. You will hit three times or 300 times. However, when you do the subtraction of the difference between these two, basically there was 2% difference, meaning there was only two more cases of heart attacks, and you may consider that much relevant or not, it's individual. 
And it also depends how frequent the events. Heart attacks are not as frequent, despite that they're the most frequent cause of death, they're not as frequent. In general population, the risk is around 3 to 4 percent. So you will hear 700 percent seven times, but you have to look for the difference. Maybe seven cases in 10 years, and then you can not panic. In summary, heart attacks, strokes, and clots are the great complications of chronic inflammation. And if you can get that across your partners, your friends, it gives you an opportunity to make the disease control a target. Because by doing that, you will be preventing these in the old days, we used to just wait until this happened, and then we can start doing things. So target inflammation. These are direct complications. So heart attacks happen and increase risk across diseases from 1.6 to 4 more times. Leg clots or deep venous thrombosis from 1.5 times to 9 times. Lung clots 1.4 to 12 times. And always look for the rate differences between groups. And I thank you all for your attention. Hold your horses for the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Avina.